Welcome back to another edition of Post Media's Ottawa Senators Panel. I'm Ken Warren with Bruce Garriock and special guest this week, Lee Versage of TSN 1200. Welcome, Lee. Thanks were, for coming in. Were you going to say special guest all the time or just <laughs> guest? I appreciate being here. Very though. special okay. guest. Uh, guys, we're, we're uh, hitting the final stretch of the season here. You want to call it the, you know, the home stretch and here they come. Not exactly. Uh, three games left and, and it's been a very long season for the Senators. Three games left here against the Rangers, against Buffalo and uh, back home at Columbus in a game that might mean something uh, for Columbus. How, how do you look at this final week and what are you looking for, Lee? Well, first of all, I'm looking for Saturday and then the season to end because it's been, as you said, a very long season for this team. And I think a lot of people are looking forward to just getting to the end. But I do think that there's some individual stories, uh, Bruce, that, you know, you look at Joey Decord, the, the signing, what game will he play coming up? I think that's interesting. I think when you start looking at individual guys, what's going to happen with Anthony Duclair, what's going to happen with Brian Gibbons, what's going to happen with some of the unrestricted free agents, that's where you start to look and say, okay, there are a lot of individual questions in the final week of, of a team that is, I'm sure – for a lot of people are looking forward to the end. Well, I think since the trade deadline, really, you started to look for the finish line. And, I, and you know, one of the things I thought was that when they did get through the trade deadline, that things were going to settle down. Then they made a head coaching change. And, and I look at the situation here going into the last week, and I think probably everybody is probably looking towards the finish line and will be glad when this is over. Uh, I think when you start looking, you know, the the – Starting to look at next year will begin starting Saturday when the final buzzer goes off against the Columbus Blue Jackets. I think a lot of these guys, there are some decisions to make on some of these players uh, that will be made in the offseason, but I think there's a there's obviously going to be a lot of change here. There's going to be some room made for some young guys, and, you know, uh, net, tomorrow begins su Sunday for this team, and obviously the, an offseason of change lays ahead. Yeah, interesting, Bruce. You said uh, once you know once the trade deadline went on and waiting for the finish line, and and we all kind of thought that they're going to stick with Guy Boucher till the end of the year. When they made the change to Mark Crawford, it's sort of okay. Well, they dealt with that easy, earlier than anybody had thought. Mark Crawford has had an opportunity to, to try to put some kind of stamp on it himself for what he wants to do. He's six eight and one, and I, I'm not sure you can read a whole lot into the record here because teams are playing for different purposes here down the stretch. But he has had the opportunity to at least establish something and say, "Hey, I, I'm a candidate for this job." Uh, can can we measure much into that record or what he's been able to accomplish here, Lee? Well, I think you can't get carried away with six wins in 15 games. I, I think people want to sit, look at the record. 6-8-1, and one, it was better than what Guy Boucher was doing. Okay, it's six wins in 15 games, and a couple of those wins are squarely on the goaltender. Right. Uh, Toronto came into town uh, last Saturday and they had nine scoring chances in the first period, and it was all Craig Anderson. He gave them a chance to get back in that hockey game. So I don't read too much into it. I, I would want to know, okay, what changed when Guy Boucher left? How has Mark Crawford uh, communicated with the young players yeah. Is he a little bit more of an X and O guy that can move forward with the team? Is that what they need to move forward with this team? Uh, Bruce, I think there's a lot of decisions. He might have put himself in the mix, but I'm not sure for Mark Crawford that this is a situation. He's not known as an X's and O's guy, and you might need a teacher to come in with all of these young kids in the next couple of years. Well, a couple of things that Mark Crawford did was, number one, he sat down with the veterans that night in Tampa and said, okay, th there's 18 games left here. What do you guys want to accomplish out of those 18 games? They talked to him. They talked about the fact that they wanted less information. They didn't want, they didn't want more meetings. They wanted less meetings. They wanted to play more of an uptick, more uh, up tempo style, not have their the not just be a defensive team, and they they aren't a very good defensive team anyways. So why would they want to play defense? Uh, and I think that 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 Crawford took their input, listened to what they had to say, and has tried to change some things around from what Guy Boucher did. Will Will Mark Crawford automatically get the job here? No, he won't automatically get the job here. But he has put himself in the mix. I think that he's got as good a chance as anybody at this point. My expectation is that Pierre Dorian will probably talk to five to six candidates. He's made a list of probably 30 to 40 names. He will whittle that down to five to six names and then go from there. Now, 
I think it's what's interesting here. We we talked a lot about what's going on with the kids, and you talked about it, Lee, about the kids and development. These exit interviews are going to be really interesting because Mark Mark Crawford uh, has been here for three years, right? He, he's been yeah. part of this um, exit interviews with the young players. What are the what are the young? I mean, of course, you're going to talk to the veterans, and the veterans understand how an NHL room works or should work. But you got this team that you, you you're talking about Brady Kachuk, you're talking about Thomas Shabbat, you're talking about Christian Yaros, Christian Willett, all of these guys going down the road. They they are going to be the core of your team. What do they think? And and and, and could they deal with a, with with a Crawford or do you, you know certainly Troy Mann's going to get an interview? And depending on what happens in Belleville this year, maybe it's too early for him. But but I think these are all questions that are going to go into the exit interviews. Well, uh, look, I, look. Troy Mann will get an interview, but I think he better get Belleville to the playoffs first if he wants to be a serious candidate is for that this important job. Though? Yeah, I think it is. Speak because I, I, because I, I will tell you one thing: this organization will be very disappointed if the Belleville Senators don't make the playoffs. Well, they've, they've had and a lot I, of roster shuffling. There's uh, been a lot of roster shuffling, and goaltending situation only got settled once Hogberg got down there for good. And Hogberg was up here for a while. I just, I just think it's difficult. They've only lost four games in regulation in their last 22. He's done a heck of a job down the stretch. Now, I know it's going to be nip and tuck here to get to the playoffs. I'm going to Belleville on Friday. Right. We're going to be there and, and looking forward to seeing what happened. Cleveland comes to town Saturday, and I think it's a it's an interesting night in the world of hockey with the last regular season game with the Ottawa Senators against Columbus. Right. Will it mean anything to the Blue Jackets? But it might mean everything well, to Cleveland, the Belleville Senators. Right, Cleveland, right. Cleveland uh, one point back right now. Well, and then and then they'll get some reinforcements from Ottawa, right? Probably Christian Willannon goes down there, probably Rudis Balsers. But if the game means something to Columbus, are you sending Willannon down because he's a mainstay right now well, on this defense. Y you might be sending him down if Mark Borowiecki's healthy. I he's mean, that's right, the yeah. reason that Christian yeah. Willannon is probably here right now. They could probably, you know, you could get a guy to New York or Buffalo fairly quickly if you if you needed to have an extra guy. Uh, I would think that uh, that that those two are on the clear day list, Balsers and and uh, Willannon, so they're going to go down. I don't believe Christian Yaros is, is he? Uh, we're, we're trying to figure that out. Yeah. I mean, if Yaros could go down and whether you would do that to him. I, you know, I think he might be, but I'm not sure that you would do that to him, but the here. problem is Christian Milan right now is their second best defenseman on the well, Ottawa Senators. Well, yeah, but, but but we just talked about how meaningless these games might be. I mean, oh, I understand, if, but if it means more that to, to the organization yeah. to, to extend your season in some way, then you put a guy down in a situation. Explain that, a that to Christian Milan. Okay, we're going to take away a whole <laughs> bunch of salary. We're not going to give you an NHL it's salary. One day. Go make an it, AHL salary because we need you it's, down there. It's one day, and then you make him feel like he's a valuable part of the organization. I, I don't know. Good question. Yeah, good question. It's an interesting question. Um, the one thing here, we talk about coaching and, and what's going to happen in the organization. The one question that also came up a couple weeks ago was the uh, president of hockey operations job. We've heard some names pop out there. We heard on the weekend that Trevor Linden was contacted about potential for the job. Um, does this, first of all, if there's any names out there, you know, we should try to throw them out there, but does this job have to be filled before the coaching job? Does that help? I mean, and again, we're, we're trying to figure out how exactly that organizational structure might work. No, because you know what? Uh, they may not fill this president of hockey operations job before the draft. So, uh, and I think they, they feel it's paramount to fill this the head coaching job before the draft because of the direction this organization is taking. So m my sense is, is that as far as this goes, it's business as usual for Pierre Dorian as far as his coaching search goes that, you know, um, when he's not watching Belleville uh, this spring, as long as they're in the playoffs, then he'll be interviewing head coaching candidates. Maybe I think he, the last time he did this, he may have gone to the World Championships to, to interview coaching candidates. So I think the the opportunity is there, Lee, to uh, to continue on with uh, with the hiring of head coach, and then worry if the senior advisor slash president of hockey operations is going to have fact come in. Right, and I totally understand and agree, Bruce, with the fact that the president might not be hired here in the next little while. they got to find the right person and the right fit. But then 
who's going to come in and say, okay, well, now there's already a GM in place. Now there's already a coach in place. And now I understand that Pierre Dorian and Eugene Melnick have a very good relationship. Where's my role in all of this? I, I think that's a, a really interesting question that somebody would want to come into that role knowing, hey, we got one, three, and four on the list, but you're going to be number two. Don't worry. You're going to be fine. You know, this is an aside. I thought it was really interesting. There's a controversy in Carolina over this uh, Harvard defenseman, Adam Fox, mm. and is not going to is not going to sign. He's going to go on to uh, try to get traded here. The guy doing the spoke speaking in Carolina in Carolina is the owner, Tom Dundon. About oh, we're going to have to trade the guy. I, I just don't. I, they've got that front office staff. They've got Don Waddell. They've got Rick Dudley. I, I I think that somebody in this if gets the position here has to be to help send a message here. I, that's just the way I look at it. I just I just wonder. Messaging is intriguing in these situations. Who knew, Bruce, that we were going to end with Adam Fox? From the Carolina Hurricanes. <laughs> you know what? I did not come into this thinking that's how we're going to end it. Nice job, Kenny. Yeah. Well, okay. I mean, we, we've got a little bit of time here. If, if we just want to talk about the last week and maybe not centers oriented, but what happens the last stretch of the season, there are some intriguing things trying to figure out, particularly in the East, the matchups of who might make the playoffs. What do you think, Lee? Well, I think for the Tampa Bay Lightning, I was impressed last night with just the way they continue to perform day after day after day. Uh, I think a lot of people will not value the Toronto Maple Leafs going into that series against Boston because of the way that they played, but it doesn't matter when they start the playoffs. Right. Everybody starts at zero. You just have to get there. And so the one team I am kind of looking forward to is the Columbus Blue Jackets because I think if they can possibly get there and they look like right now that they're going to, if they get there, I think there's going to be a weight off their shoulders. They have a very good goaltender. they got you know a really good power play up front that they can get going. I would be worried about the Columbus Blue Jackets if they get there thinking, you know what, we got nothing to lose now that we're here. I think the TV networks are waiting with bated breath to see if the Montreal Canadiens <laughs> are going to get in, yeah. if you're going to have another Canadian team in. Right now Absolutely. you've got Winnipeg, Calgary, and Toronto. If you listen to the prediction, Toronto's going to lose to Boston in three. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm like <laughs> no you. No need I, to play the fourth. Yeah, <laughs> like, like I, I'm like you. I think, you know what, anything can happen right. in a playoff series. Toronto can certainly get up off the map, but I think the most intriguing story coming down this right. last week is the Montreal Canadiens. And if Canadians. Montreal plays Tampa, you have, of course, Carey Price, and then you have the Drew and a Sergachev story that will kind of revamp as well. So. See, there is plenty of hockey that's going to go on, not in Ottawa because the season's going to end this week, but the playoffs are coming, and that's always a great time for hockey fans. Thanks once again for tuning in to Post Media's Ottawa Senators panel. Thank Lee for Sage for coming in. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time.